No! 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 <laughs> Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got two replays in the American Tier 7 light tank, the T-71DA. Now this is the alternate light tank line to the Sheridan line. And I say the alternate light tank line, in reality, this is actually the T-57 heavy line. Now, I missed out playing on this, playing in this tank back in the day, because I went through the Bulldog, which was the old Tier 7 American light tank, because there's two lines. There's one line, which the Tier 7 is the T-71CMCD, which is one that you've seen on the channel before, which I love, and is one that I'm definitely going to go back and through more on this account, post 6.0, because I can imagine it's just as beastly now, or more so than it was when I did it back then. But yeah, that line leads to the Sheridan, with the CMCD. This line leads to the T-57 Heavy. And like I say, I missed out playing this tank back in the day, because I went to the T-57 Heavy through the Bulldog line. Because before, you could go from the M41 Bulldog at Tier 7 to the T49, which was a Tier 8. And from the T49 at Tier 8, it led on to the T54E1. But then they changed it and brought the Sheridan in, made Tier 10 lights. And now that line, you can't get to the T57 t57 heavy from and the bulldog is tier 8 t49 is tier 9 etc you know how it goes and this line was created to be the only way to get to the t57 heavy i did play the t71da technically it was it was the t71 back then just the t71 the cmcd didn't exist but i did play this tank and that's because the lycan is the t71 the old school t71 that is ex this tank exactly and this tank now what we're playing a in this replays is a lichen in every way but the pen that is the only difference between this and the tier 7 premium light tank that you can earn through the halloween ops because the pen on the lichen is 175 on its standard apcr Whereas on this tank, it's 145, which can be a pain in the backside, let me tell you, with APCR against tier 8s and 9s. But, the heat pen's 210, same as the Lycan. That is literally the only difference. Both these tanks are fairly similar. And I absolutely love the Lycan, and to be honest, I should have known that I'd absolutely love this tank. The pen does hold it back a little bit, but for the most part, it's still an absolute beast. This 6 round autoloader is great. The ability to drop the clips as quickly as possible, doing tons of damage, is absolutely lovely. And it's got good view range, good mobility. It's just a whole barrel load of fun. It's just like the T71C MCD is. It's just so much fun to play. And it's a great tank. And it's a pretty decent line. Like I've, I've been playing this tank to unlock the T69, because I never played the T69. I decided, you know what, I'm going to try and, try and play through every line in the game. Try and get every tank unlocked and owned in my garage. Because that's just... A completionist me showing you know what let's let's try and do this right i think the only line that i probably have no interest in is the swedish tds because yeah i just that's not not my play style at all but there's a lot of lines that i still have to do like say the object 268 version 4 i've still got to do that line the 263 i've, I've never been up that line i've i've just unlocked this su 101 and I've got to play through that. Same with the Chinese TDs. I, I kind of want the Chinese Tier 9 and 10 TD. I'm not really bothered about the Tier 8, but I want the Tier 9 and 10. Because although they're not supposed to be that good, I kind of want them just because, you know. So there's a lot of lines I've got to go through. And this this is one of the joys of starting to play lines to get tanks. And that is that you find tanks like this, which are just amazing. And it is a great tank, and it's well worth picking up and going up the Tier and Heavy line just for it. So in this game on Sand River, we've done a lot of flitting about, as you do in light tanks. We've taken a hell of a lot of risks, and that is why we are so low health. Because we've, we've gone in on people. I mean, that is a specialty of the Lycan slash DA, 
is that it can go in on people quite nicely. It can really wreck people's day when you do go in on them, because this autoloader deals a lot of damage. I think it's like, what, 700 odd damage in a clip, at least. Quick maths is not my strong point, so I couldn't tell you the exact amount. But yeah, you're doing around 700 damage easy with the six shots you get in the clip, and that is amazing. And that means you do put out a good lot of damage, and that is great. And uh, that is one of the fun things I find about this tank. So right now, we've got rid of that tiger down there. We know where there's a medium attacking our medium in the base, and we want to get into a position where we can help him and put damage in. But I'm currently detected, and it's actually the heavy tank on my left that I never expected to just appear out of the blue. And it's a paladin. Now, luckily, it is a paladin, which means it's easy to pem from its sides, but he actually gets shut down. And we're going to try and help this guy in the base by pumping shots into this Draugen. Now, unfortunately, we missed that one. He's actually at an awkward place below a ridgeline, and there's a few rocks and stuff in the way. So we actually missed a couple of shots onto him, and now he's only got 200 hit points. But we're going to move up to this position up here. We're going to reload the clip in really quickly again. Um, we're going to try and get some more shots into this guy. Now there's the... Oh, the Tiger one that we didn't kill, sorry. The Tiger one is now progressing up. And we're like, okay, you know what? I'm going to take the risk. I'm going to shut this Tiger down. I'm going to try and help my friend in the base. So we shut him down. We take the extra second to shut the Draugen down. And unfortunately, that risk to try and shut the guys in our base down to help the heavies means that we get shut down by the full health Tiger 2 that was on our left. But... Um, so, uh, you know, by taking that risk and helping the team out, we unfortunately die. But fortunately enough for me, my heavies managed to carry out the game and win it for us. So we finished that game with four, da uh, yeah, four kills, 3.2k damage, ace tanker, uh, scout medal. And it was a very nice game for the T71DA in what is, a, is an incredibly fun tank. And it was 2k base as well. And sometimes it is like we did die in that end section right but it was worth it to basically take out the threat to our base and let the less mobile heavies have to only worry about the tank that was in our base and the tiger too now i didn't know how healthy they were because i didn't see but i just took the risk that they'd be able to carry out the game and deal with the things that were would have probably capped out so here we are on fisherman's bay and we've got the dodgy spawns. And I say dodgy spawns because generally it it's the typical way of the, a map that's created for spawns to be in the middle. So it's kind of symmetrical in a way. Say that Because normally obviously the spawns on Fisherman's Bay are A5, J5, right? And then they're directly opposite each other. And you get opportunities to get to both flanks and fight on both flanks. Whereas... Really, these flanks that we've got now, these spawns, yeah. You, one side gets the town, one side really gets the one line, and that's the way it is. Now, I'm playing aggressively right now, and we are basically trying to spot out the people crossing the A-line. Because if you can spot out the people crossing the A-line, they can get thwacked by my guys that are crossing the one line, and basically cuts off the flank for them. But I did spot a lot. I didn't really get much shot at, and I've decided, you know what? We've got a lot of people that have gone to the town. Because that's one thing that normally happens is that you get your guys go to the town from our spawn, and they don't reach it before they get an app. They just basically lose three quarters of the health, all of them, before they reach the town. Which is always annoying and always a pain. But I decided, you know what? I'm just going to go in. I'm going to help my guys out here. I'm just going to try and clear the way and move them in. So we've gone in on this Comet, we've taken a hit, we've dealt a couple of shots of damage to him, and we've actually lost quite a lot of health. So that push there was not the best. It was it was probably not really advisable, because we did get lucky in the fact that when we rushed that Comet, we didn't get crushed by lots of other tanks that were just unspotted. But we've come through the town anyway. We've come, we came through it unscathed. We had our little yellow light tank moment when we were okay. I say unscathed, we came out with half health, but, you know... We were trying to give a bit more confidence to our team to push through rather than just sit. And basically distracting as well so that the guys could move in. But now we've come to this part of the ridge line, and we're going to try and see if we can get shots at this 5100. Now the 5100 is an easy target to hit and pen, right? And we're penning this guy non-stop while he's unspotted. And we get the whole clip in. It, we assume 
while he was unspotted. Just, I, I'm assuming because the enemy damage counter keeps going up. And now we've dropped the clip, we're going to get away from here in case that light tank yellow is over, in case anyone comes through the bushes and tries to hurt us. Now there's a Roger Dodger, which we can pen if we get his side, but if we get anywhere other than his side, we are going to struggle. And even on the side of his turret, you'll see we are struggling. And it's only an orange pen marker, and that's because we are like a 50-50 to go through. Uh, now I've got his backside and his side we get some nice shots in and leave him on 230 hit points, which means our heavies should be able to deal with him quite well. Now this Leo here is also making the mistake of driving in front of me, but look at all the bushes and the foliage and the down trees I've got in front of me. I should be able to use this covered stone spot until I need to drop my clip. And fortunately enough for me, he's just ignoring as I drop the clip in. I've still got three shells left and I kind of want to finish this guy off, but he's below the ridge lines and I'm waiting for him to just come up. And there we go. We get one shot in. We make sure we shut him down with the second. And then we get the final shell in to the Wraith over there. And we're just waiting for... The, again, look how quick it reloads. We drop the clip. We wait 13, 14 seconds. And 700 damage is ready to roll again. And you see with the progression that we're doing right now, we are keeping in our bushes. And I'm just pulling back to make sure I've still got cover in front of me. And I'm just trying to keep the distance. And now we've got a bit more distance and a bit more foliage. We're just going to drop the clip into this 5100, finish him off. And now there's a Wraith in front of us, which, by the way, the Wraith is going to be a right pain in the backside to pen. Yeah, we've got his side, but we can't really pen it from the front. If it was a Panzer 58 Mutz, we might be able to. But because it's actually a Wraith and it's got so much space armor slapped on it, we really will struggle. And even his side sometimes we will ricochet because, yeah. But now here we go, foliage using the cover. We've pulled back in, we've got better cover in front of us and we're using the bushes and we finally only get spotted because this guy's progressed in front of us by another 100 metres. And there you go, we're bouncing off his side because spaced armour. But now we've done that, it's like, okay, you know what, let's, let's just go. Let's just go in on this guy. He can't kill us in one shot and he's not focusing on us. So it's like, okay, you know, we're just going. We're going to finish him off while we're on the move. And we're going to try and get into a better position to get more shots. Now there's this dragon over here. We're going to auto aim a shot. Unfortunately, just as we auto aim the shot, he moved behind a building. So we didn't hit it. But we snapped the shot into that guy. And then we've got some nice juicy shots onto this guy. The food bug kicks in, shoots our aim to the right because food bug, annoying. And then that game ends. And it was another great game for the t 71 dm You just run around like a lunatic and it's... it's so much fun. I do love this tank. It's great. And we finished that game with four kills, 3.5k damage, 613 assistance, and an ace tanker. And yeah, the T57 Heavy line is definitely a line that's worth going down. Because the T57 Heavy, especially now with the crew skills, it's filthy. The T54 E1 used to be, well, it was a, it was a favourite of mine. But a lot of people didn't like it because it was derpy gun handling. But now it doesn't have derpy gun handling. So it's actually a lot better and definitely good. T69, well, I've only just unlocked it, so I've still got to play it. But this line is well worth going up, and this tank is a beast. So, as always, everybody, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. A great success!